We have a uh, lack of housing in the village. The community is, is growing and growing and growing. It's not growing smaller. Get more people in the community working and build more homes for the people who need them. There, we have quite a few people here that need that new home here. When we talked to the people of Edmoutluk about what their biggest concerns were, they wanted to train more carpenters in the village so that they could start their own tribally owned construction company. So these houses are not just houses, they're construction education courses for a crew of eight local workers. Right now, the project's almost done. We we're, went through quite a few challenges. We gotta look ahead in order to get things done good. good. And I have a part of my crews. They're really good workers. They're intelligent. Mautluk is the first village that CCHRC has worked with where they required the owner of the home to be on the construction crew. One family member from each of the families that will live in these homes works with the crew as a member of the crew but for half pay. The other half of their pay goes directly to the home. I've been trying to get a house for a long time since the first born of my first kid. There are a lot of applicants, 20 or 30 something applicants filled out for these houses. And only two were picked. And they picked my name first. And I was really surprised. And I really happy and I cried. I needed a house and I'm thanking God that he gave me this house and I'm really still happy about it, mm, really emotional and my family's too. Mm. Just people working in here, a lot of body heat and got really hot in here. There'll be a bathroom in there. Sorry. This will be a bathroom. There'll be a, a toilet. And there's a vent. Right there. There's a vent right there for the house system. Well there we'll go out the, we'll go out this way and come back out and the new new fresh air will come in. If that homeowner has been on the construction site for eight weeks during the entire build, on the day these folks move in, the head of the household understands every single part of this building. I think actually what we're seeing at Mothluck is what we've always hoped to see. And, and that is a community that is really taking ownership of their housing. I mean, these folks here are motivated. They've really accomplished a great deal. They're learning the skills and they're taking the responsibility that, it's gonna, that they're going to need in order to move new housing in this area ahead. I think we need to include education 
get uh, get those young people that can have a trade or want to learn, just include them so they will help out too. And then if we start to educate our young people, uh, they will know how to build a house. We would help the young people and they will help us. You have to come in, have an open mind, and come into a culture and understand lifestyle and weather conditions. No matter where you go in the world, if it's here or Florida, you need to understand what you're dealing with and build a house that works in that environment. And that environment is not only the weather, but it's the people and how they live. There are many things about the home. It doesn't look like a prototype experimental home. It's, it's the same shape as many of the other homes in the village. It's the same roof pitch as many of the other homes in the village. What's interesting about the, this house, what makes it a prototype home, is how the building meets the ground, how the foundation can be adjusted by the occupant to account for the movement of the ground in this region. When the leveling is off, I could easily adjust it to level the house. When, it, when, it, when that goes down a little, I level it up. That's why they let me work on it. So I could know everything that's on it, in it, and how to take care of the house. Here in its mouth, look, it's, it's very low-lying, it's very wet. There's no high ground in its mouth look. And the permafrost around here is about 31 degrees. So any heat that transfers from our foundation or our building to the ground has the potential to melt the permafrost. At Mount Luck has no heavy equipment of any kind. We needed an adjustable, above grade foundation that the resident themselves could realign uh, without any heavy equipment at all. The resident of each of these houses was responsible for leveling the building foundation in the first place. Another thing that they spoke of quite a bit is how to shorten the construction season and make a quicker build. We did that through this integrated truss structure. The trusses were built all in one piece and could be delivered by a barge and then could be tipped up in one day. You could frame out the house. And this greatly reduced our construction time. For these two houses, they're going to, all told, it will have taken nine weeks to build both of these houses, uh, which is an aggressive timeline. The only motorized equipment that we had at our disposal were two all-terrain vehicle four-wheelers. And with those four-wheelers, we've done every single aspect of this uh, build. And this is important not just to at Mount Luck, to, but to many villages that don't have any heavy equipment. Uh, we've become very reliant on heavy equipment in urban areas because it saves so much time. What that has done is, it's changed the way we make buildings where we almost assume that there will be heavy equipment available. In rural Alaska, that's not so. This is a village that does not have any sewer plan and it really doesn't have any water plan. Conventional water sewer is so difficult here. So they really wanted to create something that wasn't a multi-million dollar conventional sewer system and wasn't a bucket to try and find something that was neither of those things. If you like it and if it's 
a lot better, then maybe your neighbors here in Ismatla can get them also, you know, and then we can yeah. get away from the honey buckets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read it and go tell stories to your kids. <laughs> <laughs> How do we handle these very difficult problems that not just at Mount Look, but all of Alaska might be facing? Problems of foundations on permafrost. Problems of water and sewer uh, in places that are still on honey buckets, even in, in the 21st century. How do we deal with problems such as rising fuel costs? These problems are not unique to Admautluk. They're everywhere. They're everywhere in the state. Uh, they're everywhere in the north. <laughs> Homes that cost less to make and use a lot less energy and are durable over time are always going to be teachers. They're going to inform how other houses are made in the village. What these houses do is they, they're a precedent. If you show a precedent that displays what's possible, that someone did here once, then that's that's important. But if you can show a precedent that says, this is what we did here once, our, you know, the people of Edmouth, look, we, we built these homes, uh, then that's a more powerful precedent. I'd be happy if someone called me to work on their house. I'll be there because I had fun building it and learn things that I don't know. You gotta look ahead, always look ahead in order to get what we need and want, especially working for the community. Can't look right under your nose, you'll get cross-eyed. But if you look straight, you'll go forward instead of stepping backward. Those people that are building, helping out, would help other people that are going to be building a new house and build them as the way they are. And it, they would really help our community if they build it right. I know they will build it right.